Hello everyone and welcome to the Gaming Club. In this video I will talk about buildings. What kind of buildings we have in the game, how to build, how to upgrade, what do you need to know before you start one, and I will go through each particular building and also explain its functionality. So the video is intended mostly for beginners, but if you are an experienced player you might also find some useful information. If you're ready, let's start. The first and the most important building in the whole game is called Headquarters or HQ. Majority, if not all of the content in game depends on your HQ level. So what kind of buildings you can have, what kind of gear you can use, what kind of events you can participate in, and many, many other things, they all depend on the headquarters level. That's why you want to upgrade this building first before everything else. And uh, to do that, you have to fulfill certain requirements, which I'll mention later. Besides that, your headquarters provides a small bonus uh, to your march capacity or how many troops you can send uh, in one rally and it gives you a little increase of your battle power, as you can see on the screen. You can upgrade your headquarters till level 30. Afterwards, you can obtain one additional star, up to three stars in total, and one star takes you five levels to upgrade. But that's pretty much late game content and uh, I don't want to go into details about it. Moreover, if you're already at that stage, well, then this video is not for you. As any other building in this game, in order to upgrade headquarters, you need to meet certain requirements. However, in case of HQ, you have two buildings requirements before you can proceed with upgrade. The first and the default one is Hero Precinct, that needs to be at certain level before you can move headquarters to the next one. And also one additional building that you need to upgrade as well. You don't need to remember what kind of building is that, because all these buildings and requirements are listed on my website and you can find the link in the description. Second requirement to upgrade headquarters is reaching certain amount of prosperity points. I will cover what prosperity is in details later on in this video. And the third requirement is gathering enough resources. As you can see from my upgrade to level 30, you need, well, quite a lot of resources. So especially if you are free to play, remember that headquarters is your most expensive building and make sure that you farm enough resources. Whether you get it from the tiles or you attack someone else, it doesn't matter. But remember that you will need a lot of them. Once upgrade is completed, you will have a small reward of battle power and prosperity points increase on the top of the new content that you can now access. And the last thing to mention here is that uh, upgrade time is significant. However, it can be improved by different settlement buffs and uh, special technologies that you research in your lab. I will talk about that later. If you want to change the appearance of your headquarters, you can do that as well. That's done through the skins menu and it can be done also for your profile picture and the troops uh, while they march. All these skins cannot be purchased directly in game, but uh, they can be earned through different events. Skins can be permanent, which means once you obtain them, they will stay in your inventory forever and you can apply them whenever you like. Or they can be temporarily, like for three or seven days and once the timer expires, your default appearance uh, will be applied again. And the last thing your headquarters is capable of is providing different settlement buffs. They are split into two categories. The first one is combat, where you apply boosts to your rally capacity, troop attack and stuff like that. And the second category is development buffs, where you can increase your gathering speed, construction speed or resource production. They are pretty much self-explanatory. Just check the particular buff description and you will know what effect it provides. What is more important here is the situation when you want to use particular buff and I will cover that in some future videos. Next building I would like to talk about is called Hero Precinct. This is the building where you locate and upgrade your heroes. It also defines maximum level limit for your heroes. As you can see on my screen it's currently 80 and that's the maximum that you can achieve currently in game. However, that's not where you start. You start with level 6 and the more you upgrade Hero Precinct the higher level limit you'll get. At level 26, it will be 80, and uh, you cannot go above that, even if you upgrade your Hero Precinct further. What also changes with upgrades is the uh, amount of uh, advanced searches you can perform per day for free, and also the epic search uh, cooldown that will be reduced the more you upgrade this building. Once you have found some hero fragments, you can use this building to locate a hero. When the hero is located, you can use the same fragments to improve his rank. You can also level him up by improving his stats, improve his skills by consuming skill books, and increase the hero power by putting on better gear. Another thing that you can do in Hero Precinct is use advanced or epic searches to locate more hero fragments. 
if you are not lucky, you will get some speed ups and uh, resources. If you are lucky, you will have either elite, epic, or legendary hero fragments. You can use up to five advanced searches per day for free, and uh, you can have one epic search approximately every day and a half, depending on your hero precinct level. Every search will contribute a certain percentage to that bar on the top. Once you hit 100%, you will get a chest with a guaranteed legendary fragment. And of course, you can get more advanced or epic searches by completing different events or just doing daily tasks. As you have noticed, only epic hero search can drop you legendary hero fragments as well as legendary skill books, while advanced hero search only drops epic and elite hero fragments and epic skill books. Another place where you can get those skill books is by doing explorer trail missions. There are quite a lot of them, and uh, once you do the mission for the first time, it will grant you quite a lot of these uh, skill books and also some other resources on the top of that. It's uh, quite uh, straightforward. You just check what is the power requirement on the left side and make sure that your squad power matches it and also that you have enough uh, stamina. It's a different one that you use when you're doing rallies and uh, is uh, filled in independently. I would recommend doing these challenges as soon as possible because it will help you to level up your hero skills uh, quite quickly and uh, increase their power significantly. If your heroes are not strong enough to complete a particular challenge, you can always borrow a hero from your alliance mate. By default, this option is disabled, so what you're gonna see when you first try this is only your heroes, but as soon as you tap that little hero support box, you will see more heroes appearing in the list, and you can just choose one that is more powerful and replace him with any heroes from your squad. So once you've done that, you will see that your squad power has increased, and you can complete this challenge without any issues. You can do this challenge as many times per day as you like, provided that you have enough stamina, and every time you will still get legendary books. This stamina is different from your rally stamina and is recovered independently. Sometimes you hear a precinct building can locate a random mission on the map, and once you go there and complete it, you will be able to find more epic hero fragments and some resources on the top, you need also to consume the same stamina as for your Explorer Trail missions. Again, it's a different one and recovered independently. What is important here that you have set an amount of time to complete the mission, then it will disappear. So make sure that you have enough squad power. And uh, once you completed the mission, don't forget to share it with your clan mates because they can complete it as well and get the same rewards. Last but not least is the hero training area. It's a new functionality of the hero precinct building and it was added to the new estates only. Now you need to level up only three heroes. They will be called instructors and you can see them on the left. And uh, every next hero that you add to the right or to the training area will be leveled up automatically to match the instructor's level. Of course, uh, the lowest one of the three. But still, uh, you can add uh, as many heroes as you like. It depends on your hero precinct uh, level. So the higher level, the more heroes you can add. You can also remove them and uh, use that space for another hero with the 24 hour cooldown. But again, you can clean it up uh, using uh, bio caps. And uh, why is it important? In the older states uh, to get all, I don't remember how many we have, like 15 heroes, you need quite a lot of experience books. And it was, well, very, very unrealistic to get all 15 to level 80. While in the new states, I think it's quite possible to do that. One more thing you need to remember about is after you place a certain hero to the training area, while you don't need to level him up anymore, you still need to improve his rank by spending hero fragments. So remember to do that because it gives quite a boost to the battle power and also increase his uh, skills by spending skill books and equipping better gear again to increase his battle power. Because if you don't do that, you will just have a leveled character without any real damage. Next building I'm gonna cover in this video is Research Lab. It's also a priority building and you need to upgrade it as soon as possible. The main function is to research different technologies, providing you with nice boosts. But there is one function that I like to cover first because I've seen a lot of questions about it, and it's called Incubator. Incubator is like a bank where you can invest your bio caps and uh, once uh, you put them under certain plan, you will get more bio caps in return. So for example, if you put uh, 6,000 bio caps for 30 days, 
in 30 days, they will grow by 50% and you will have 9,000 biocaps in return. Quite a useful feature and the amount of biocaps you can invest depends on the level of your research lab. Now what you can actually research in your lab. There are three trees with different technologies. First one is development. It allows you to decrease your construction time, your research time. It also allows you to train more troops per one go. And the most important is uh, it allows you to increase number of rallies that you can send to wilderness. So for beginners, I always recommend to prioritize this tree. Then you have economic one that allows you to increase the speed of uh, harvesting resources both inside of your settlement and outside. And the third branch is battle one where you can increase stats of your troops. So attack, defense, and uh, lethality and some others. Of course, uh, battle one you can leave for later uh, because uh, unlikely you will fight a lot at the beginning and uh, start with development and economic as your priority. Of course, uh, the further you go in the research tree, the longer it will take you to research one technology. As you can see, uh, for me, a tool improvement technology takes like eight days to complete research. And I will cut my video here because initially I planned to, to cover all the buildings in one single video. However, it appeared to be over 30 minutes long and I decided to split it into shorter series. Please don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss them out. I would also like to remind that I have a website where you can find all my latest guides and some fresh redemption codes. So make sure you check it out as well. As for now, that's it. Thanks for watching and I wish you a nice day.